It's tricky moving to a new street, a real headache moving to a new city. Can you imagine how difficult it is to move to an entirely new country? This week, Kirsty and I are helping Yvonne Fisher, who after 40 years living under the sunshine in Miami, has decided to up sticks and return to the country of her birth. She's starting a new life where they make the real stuff in Northern Ireland. Cheers. We're professional house hunters, and our job is to make sure the buyer gets the best possible property for the best possible price, whether it's a loft in the city or a little place in the country. Over the coming weeks, we'll be finding properties for people who have to move but need a little help. But with only one long weekend to find them the home of their dreams, it's a race against the clock. Our task is to find for Yvonne a house with a hint of Irish charm and bags of modern convenience. Not easy in a market booming now that permanent peace is on the horizon in Northern Ireland. But with only a few days to get the job done, we've really got to get going. Yvonne sold her three-bedroom house with swimming pool in Miami one year ago, and she's presently renting a detached bungalow in Ballymuir. She really loves it where she is, but she feels the need to put down permanent roots. This is one of the very, very top things on my agenda for my house. It's, it needs to have a beautiful garden, it needs to have its privacy, and it needs to have some lovely space to work with. Yvonne's big passion is watercolour painting, and so she's stressed the need for plenty of space and plenty of light to indulge her hobby. Oddly enough, when I was in Miami, all of my work was landscapes of Ireland. Now that I'm in Ireland, all of my work is tropical flowers from Miami. My dream home, of course, would be a big studio, just a big barn converted to a wonderful studio. But to be practical, I really do need a three-bedroom, hopefully a two-bath house or a two-loo house. So with a maximum budget of 70000 and knowing that Yvonne likes her modern conveniences, we've got a tricky job ahead of us. Owing to recent developments in the peace process, property values in Northern Ireland have started to rise and in the last seven years alone, house prices have doubled. Properties in hot areas like Belfast are expected to rise in value by up to 50% over the next five years. Northern Ireland is going through something of a renaissance presently and with more than its fair share of domestic new build, this could be the best solution for Yvonne. So how would you begin if you were looking for a home in an area or even a country you didn't know that well? Well, we're going to make a start surfing the web in this internet cafe. In America, the World Wide Web has completely transformed the way people buy and sell property. 98% of homes for sale can be found on the web. In Britain, the popularity of the internet is beginning to change our own market. You can search from the comfort of your own home, from work if the boss isn't watching, or from an internet cafe like this one. Go to a particular estate agent site, or possibly a property search engine that gathers information from all sorts of others. Most of them include colour photographs, and you can search via a combination of area, price, or numbers of rooms. Fantastic, look yeah. at this. Armfuls of property to go and see. <laughs> I'm not sure all of them will be the right thing, but there are tons. Yeah, but there's yeah. so much to look at. I'm yeah. really excited, and I really want to get going. Can we go Brilliant. now? Yep, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Let's do it. So, armed with all the internet properties we found, we decided to show Yvonne a three-bed, semi-detached house with garden and a large garage in Bally Clare. First impression from outside? Hey, Rock. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Why is there a cage on this fireplace? I don't, I don't want to know. But this is a good-sized window. It's a very good-sized yeah, window. Yeah, it's a nice window. Just gonna... really and this space the... is probably big enough to do some artwork. We're really solid? in the land of the twitching curtains, I think. If this wall were to go, then this yeah. room would really... It'd be fantastic. Yes, it, would be, be it would be dual different. aspect. Mm. It would lead on to the garden. You'd see the garden. It would be light. It would add lights from both sides. Yes. Yeah. And you'd have a really good open space, uh -huh. I think. They're talking about RSJs and refurbishment. It's already on the market at 72 and a half. It's not going to happen. Uh-oh. Big time problem here. <laughs> okay, pass the chico. What he thinks about that? I, uh, I bet you ten pounds, Philip Spencer, that it's the shower tray from yeah. the shower. Because look, it says in the details, bathroom, shower room, and I bet you the shower room is the in the centre here, and the bedrooms are on either side. 
Is this it? Well, if it's a shower, then I uh, cursed oh, you. Oh, sorry, Phil. Get a part with a pound. It is. <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, wow. is a pound. <laughs> oh, look. yeah. Yeah, look, it's clearly not sealed. And it's clearly been sealed and resealed in an effort to make it. So that's another expense. Yeah. Millview Drive certainly has the space with three bedrooms and a large garage. Unfortunately, it's semi-detached, and she doesn't particularly like it, so we move on. Since Yvonne is looking for convenience at a reasonable price, we recommend looking at new build property, and first on the list is the Village Hill Housing Estate, where we were met wow. by Nigel. Well, that's Site number here. 19 that's is the one we're here to look at. Selling very well. Um, we released a few this morning, and we had people queuing all night for them, so... What do you really? mean they're queuing yeah. all night? Well, they, they come and stand out here and wait? They stand out and wait. You're because, selling tickets? Well, no, then they know they can get the house they want. Site number 19 is the one we're here to look at. It's a three-bedroom detached property at a set price of £72,950. Oh, wow. Yvonne, this requires a bit of vision. Well, it's I'm good at vision, sell. but this is, <laughs> this is a challenge. <laughs> But it's kind of interesting to see it this way because then I can really enjoy the roof space up there, yeah. which I don't, never see in the other houses. See, this kitchen's got a lovely view. Because mm. there's not going to be anything built here, is there? No. no. Oh, so yes, so you can you, see out to You the see hills. into your garden, but also out to the hills. This is the master bedroom. I can yeah. tell you right now, it isn't big enough. You see, the difference <laughs> is if you, if you want a two bedrooms, you just take the centre wall down. The centre wall the two between those bedrooms. two. Okay, you, you yes. Put a, you put your master yes. bedroom beside your bathroom. Right, right. And again, you can do that. Yes. So, you know what's going to happen, Nigel? If I buy a house like this, I'm going to be redesigning the whole floor plan. That yeah. wall must go, that wall yeah. must go, everything must go. <laughs> Yvonne's right, if you catch properties early enough in a development, you can get a bespoke home. Be one of the first to view developments and you can secure the best plot of land. Secondly, before the house is completed, you can still move the walls around, which will give you the layout you want. And finally, you get to choose your style of paints and papers. It's a very posh estate. No, and it's in a lovely situation. She was quite situation. funny, though. She said to uh, Nigel, I want it bigger and cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> the two she will doesn't not go beat together. around the bush, does she? No. Overall, the general feeling was that Village Hall was a sensible idea, but all the bargains had gone, and so it was off to the next house. Old Coach Road was in the local paper and described as idyllic. Without an appointment, we decided to drive by and take a look. Slow, 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 slow. Oh, look, right next to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> That is useful. Look at that. The traffic down this road will be going very fast. Yeah, well, it's a beautiful and a road. It. Look at it. I don't think this is going to work, really? Kirsty. Nothing looks accessible. I don't understand this property. So what do you reckon, Kirst? We've got a lot of things here that Yvonne's actually really looking for. I know. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed that she wouldn't even get out of the car. Mm. This is the most staggering view. It's absolutely beautiful. Mm. That it's could be the marriage house. of... Yeah. The Miami modern and the period I Irish know. idyll. No, we've got a double garage, we've got a big garden. But, but she's we've not got gonna this go road and we can't dig it up. Yvonne's getting harder to please. This is getting really tough. We have shown Yvonne several properties and to be honest, I'm getting a bit desperate. Mm. I think she's in too much of a Miami mindset. And although she's been here since June, which is nearly a year ago, she hasn't come to terms with the restrictions of her budget and the type of property you get in this area. Her brief was very, really quite flexible, but every time we've taken into her property, she's tightened it up. Yeah. And, and it's making it pretty difficult. Moss Cottage is 100 years old, with two bedrooms, a landscape rear garden, double glazed windows and masses of original features, priced at 75000 Check this out. What do we have? Oh, look oh. at this. Wow. Isn't this, Isn't this lovely? And look at, look at the fireplace, mm. the cast iron fire, and the parquet floors. I love the parquet floors. And the windows, not new, no? No, um, they are new. No, They're double glazed. Yeah, double glazed. Double glazed. Oh, excellent, excellent. I think you probably want double glazed. Well, yes. It's quite bleak. It's quite remote, isn't it? Yes, it is. It seems like it would be a cold place in the winter for sure. You could just have that and oh, then yeah. the top half open and you could look out on that view. Oh, yeah. Phil, get out of the way. It's not you we're trying to look at. <laughs> it's beautiful. Look at this. Oh, my God. 
Oh, it's so just gorgeous. Look at the floor. Look at the size of the bathroom and the floor stenciled. <gasps> oh, this is a huge stunning. bathroom and an electric shower. It's tiles to the ceiling, which is a really good thing. Yeah, really like nice this. tiles too. I love I this space and look. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes look at the size of this bedroom it's huge this yes bedroom. so that whole space this would take so much of my furniture it would so do my furniture and check it out i've got a look, fireplace in my fun. bedroom i know so lovely look at that this house makes me very happy does it yes very happy. Moss Cottage is charming and has all the modern conveniences Yvonne's searching for, but with only two bedrooms and more importantly isolated at 45 minutes drive from Belfast, we think it needs more thought. It's a lovely house. Yeah. But it's not right for Yvonne. What makes you so sure? She'll never buy it. Can you imagine moving out of Miami where you can dial a pizza and pop around and see all your friends to come and live here? Well, we'll see. But I think you're wrong. Yeah. Do you want to bet money on it? I do. Okay, bet your tenner. Fifty. No! No way! No way! Phil! You're not sure? Sportsman's bet. Sportsman's bet. Sportsman's bet. bet. <laughs> okay. You sure this? Yeah. Time? Sportsman's bet. <laughs> okay. But it would still. Find be... out who's right oh. in the second half and join us for more properties of the week. How much did I bet you, Phil? I think. I knew you had a bet! <laughs> <laughs> Yvonne's got 70000 to spend on a house near Belfast. She likes Moss Cottage and she's enlisted her aunt to help her decide if she should proceed with it. That's Bellinger from yeah. here. That's 12 miles to Belfast and this is where Clog Mills is. Yeah. I mean, that's... I, I can't let you do it, Yvonne. I can't let you do it. Three times as long. Three times the trip. Be but honest, as, as you have to leave in 7.15, you'd be getting up in the dark. You'd be leaving home when it was just getting light. But mm. it would still be... Oh, mm. difficult, yeah. How much did I bet you, Phil? I think I knew you had a bet. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you did. Oh, you stinkers. <laughs> I had a bet. So with Moss Cottage eliminated, the next property is a large, modern, semi-detached house in Castle Green. Offers over 74,950. Wow, good size kitchen. No cupboard doors, but... Cupboard doors are very easy to put on. Are they? I'm so glad I have all my tools with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to need them all. What worries me is when I see cracks in the walls yeah, like that, I really quite a large question crack. the construction. Lenders and insurers are still wary about lending in areas affected by subsidence, so it's important to assess any damage before you make an offer. Subsidence is caused by the ground moving away from the underside of the foundations of a property and can be spotted relatively easily. Telltale cracks appear on the building, especially near windows and doorways. Windows and doors may be difficult to open or even close. But to be sure, ask a neighbour what their experience has been. If your neighbours have treated their houses, you should follow suit. However, if no one has done anything, chances are the buildings have settled down, so leave well alone. It's hard to, it's hard to imagine the space here with everything kind of blanketed off as yeah. it is. But well, it is good having that archway, yes. which yeah. clearly goes through to yes. the other room. Can we open that up and see what happens? Yeah. Let's do exactly see, that. See, there's been a couple of houses now that we've wanted to knock an arch in right. the wall to make this right. room dual aspect. They've got that nice cove thing going yeah. on in the ceiling. Which... So that gives quite a different feel to that front room, doesn't it? Yes, yes, much nicer, much nicer. And, of course, I'd leave that open most all the time. OK, the thing that I wanted to make a note of is there are... So far, there are no closets in any of the bedrooms. There's no, no built-in closets. There's a bath here. Mm. Is it a, an? Uh, is it a walk-through bath? No, this is a separate. Yeah. It's an ensuite, ensuite. bedroom. So you've got two. That's good. From an investment point of view, mm -hmm. if you ever went back to uh, America and wanted to rent this house out because mm -hmm. it's got two bathrooms, you'd come on a much better rent. I feel better about this now. This is the one, for sure. Yvonne, just to put you under a little bit of pressure, we've got a couple more to see. Supposing none of those were suitable, can you pitch yourself buying this house? Probably. 
Probably yeah. 75%, probably. Probably 75%. But its market price of 74,950 puts it at the very limit of Yvonne's finances and it's semi-detached with no garage. The next house we've got to look at has a very strange story attached, but first, check out this week's Properties of the Week. In the sensational converted Royal Navy Hospital in Great Yarmouth, you could buy a bit of history. A three-bedroom house here with a private garden is for sale at £72,500. How about a riverside cottage in the Lake District National Park? On the banks of the Gowan, it's a two-bedroomed house with two public rooms and it could be yours for only £69,950. Given the weather we've been having recently, how about heading off to the sun, to Sanseyers in Mallorca? Right in the heart of the island, you could build the house of your dream. The land will cost you £74,000. How about buying in the heart of Birmingham's old jewellery quarter? This interior-designed one-bedroom apartment is urban living at its finest and it could be yours for £80,000. Finally, why not travel to the 18th century Castle House in Wiltshire? Here you can buy a two-bedroom apartment for £77,500. Yvonne, just remind us which road we're on. I think this is Toby Downey Avenue. The reason Yvonne knows the name of this street is because she rents a house at the end of it, just down there. And there's a funny story attached to the house we're about to go and see. Last night we were all having a well-deserved drink at the end of a long day. And Karen, who's the cousin of our cameraman, Jules, this is Jules. came up to see him because he lives in England and she lives here in Northern Ireland. And they were having a chat and she was introduced to Yvonne. And she said, oh, you're the lady who lives at the end of my road with the pink flamingos in the garden. <laughs> So I was like, yeah, that's me. And Karen is selling her house. So it turns out that there may be a house that is three, four doors away. Uh-huh. That's for sale. Yes. We're going to go and see it. And it's all down to our cameraman, Jules. Yes. And His Robert cousin, Robert Karen. <laughs> Tobadani Avenue is a detached three-bedroom bungalow with many modern conveniences and is not yet on the market with an estate agent. So this looks good. That will have to be moved, Yvonne. Moved or painted. But what is it? Do we know? It's the oil tank, I suspect. It's a monster. Come on. A this monster. is it, Yvonne. Okay, this okay. is the last one. It's, it's one of the smaller kitchens that we've seen, but actually mm -hmm. it, it, the it layout works. really yeah. works. Yes. No gas. That. No gas. There's no gas here at all, but I think they're, they're working no gas. In the you air, can have colour gas. Which is bottle gas. Yes. Yeah. Excellent idea. This is a huge room. Yes. It is big. Yes. And this is what I was talking about. It is so spacious and it's exactly the same size as my house that I'm renting. And I have <laughs> so I have <laughs> Yes, and I have my my drafting board and easels and everything right here in front mm. of the window, which really works for me. Fireplace, fireplace is very unusual, the facade of the fireplace, isn't it? Lots and lots of things exactly like down the road, and exactly like Miami, so I think this is exactly what she wants. I don't like it much myself. What's your gut feeling about this house? I think that it, it's, well, exactly the floor plan I, I've been living with, so I know it's workable for me. I know that it's going to take me a good long time to put my stamp on it and taking mm. up and replacing carpets and everything. But the main rooms that I'm gonna be using, mm -hmm. which is the living room and this bedroom, mm -hmm. are, were there almost. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very little I have to do to those two rooms. It sounds like she loves it. It's exactly what she's looking for, and I've got a nasty suspicion it's gonna be just out of budget. I don't know, I'd say 82, 85 grand, somewhere there. Tobadani could be the perfect home. It's got three bedrooms and all mod cons. It's comparable to Vaughn's rented home and her old house in Miami. But that oil tank is an eyesore. We've got to call the valuer and find out what... Price, big number here. Yeah, yeah. Very important. What Very are we important. praying for? Well... I, you know, I can, I can really love this place for 70. Because, 70. Because okay. I know moving the oil tank and replacing that unit is okay. big bucks. So, okay. You can love it for 70. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can think about it for... 72. Beyond 72? For 75, I'd rather You're do the other guy. Right on the button. I know, yeah. but this but is But I've been thinking about this because okay. the other one I don't have a lot to do. Yeah. That's good. Okay. But that's, that's good. good. Great. With only half a day to go, the pressure was on. 
so we raced back to Castle Green for a second viewing and put a call in to see if Toby Downey had been valued yet. Hello. Karen, it's Phil. I work with, with your cousin Jules yes, on location. Hi. hi. We're wondering, or looking for an update, have yeah. you heard back from uh, last night's valuation yet? Yes, we had. And, and has he come back to you with a figure? Yes, he has. And what might that be? <laughs> well, he said that he was going to put it, if I was going to put it on the market, it would go on about 79950 and hopefully to get sort of like the early 80s for it. Right. That was his opinion. And today I phoned and asked another one to come out this evening again mm. to give me a, a second, second opinion. opinion. Yeah. yeah. I'm standing here with Yvonne now. Yeah. I think that'll price Yvonne out of the game. She does really like your, your bungalow. Mm hmm. If we're able to do a deal off market because the house hasn't gone on with an estate agent yet, yeah. mm -hmm. would you be willing to um, to negotiate? Oh, absolutely, yes. Okay, well, Even I'll, saving I'll, the one or two I'll, percent I'll, of estate I'll, agents I'll, fee for yeah, doing I'll, a deal I'll, without I'll them that. still okay, meant Toba Downey you. may be too rich Thanks for so Yvonne. Bye. Bye bye. Phil, what I want to do is kind of tromp through the house and make to do notes. Yeah. So I get a rough idea of what kind of money I have to spend mm -hmm. once I'm in here. I have to buy a washing Yvonne machine. is being very practical, remembering to include the costs of all key electrical appliances and any decorative alterations she needs to make within her overall budget. It's so easy to be carried away in the buying of a property, but it's crucial to be realistic. If you need to buy things, then you need to buy them, and you've got to take the cost into account. Now, you, you've got a list? Kind Your of list, a list of things that you need to do. Well, yeah, I've got a list. I still have the Tober Downey thing in my head. Mm -hmm. But I can get it out of my head because it's not well, where I want. We need to go back and crunch numbers. Yes, we so do that. That's the next thing to do. I hate to agree with Phil, but this is definitely the one. After working with the figures, we all came to the same conclusion. It had to be Castle Green. Hello, Catherine speaking. Catherine, hi, it's Kirsty from the location programme. Hi, Kirsty. Hi, um, I wanted to make an offer on 16 Castle Green. Oh, right, OK. Yvonne really doesn't want to spend any more than effect, what is effectively 75. It's, it's the 74,950. Right. Now, okay. I know it stands... Because Yvonne only has 75,000, we have to be smart with her money. Yeah. We know that we're offering less than some previous offers, but we're making it clear that there are no time restrictions. Yvonne can wait, and apparently the other purchasers can't. It's risky, but money isn't always the only issue. And if you haven't got enough, you just have to be a bit more inventive when trying to do the deal. OK, thanks so much. Thanks very much for your offer, and I. Bye-bye. What? What, 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 what? Well, she basically said she'd put it forward. You know, obviously, it. she was hoping for an offer of a bit more. She's had an offer of 77, 78. But the fact that you're prepared to wait is a big thing in your advantage. It'll be fine. It'll be, fine. It'll be good. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's really scary. <laughs> OK. Bye. Well, it was a gamble, and it hasn't paid off. The vendors decided that she can afford the time to wait for a better offer. Now, Yvonne could probably clinch the deal if she increased from 75,000, but she knows her limits. And there is a rule of house hunting, know your limits and stick to them. The right house will come along. Join us next week when once again we're on the hunt for the perfect home and finding new ways of getting more space for less money. Not always an easy task.